What do Dirty Cow, DNS rebinding, Meltdown, and most threaded applications written by me have in common? Well, for security, they are all bad. In this video, we are going to talk about a sneaky bug type which can be hard to predict with a black box approach, race conditions. We are going to focus on what they are, where they come from, and how they can be exploited. But before we do, the purpose of these videos is to explain theory for a specific security topic. Once you understand the theory, you'll be able to solve relevant capture the flag problems. One of the places you can solve these problems is 247ctf.com. At the end of this video, a 247ctf challenge will be referenced, which will enable you to test your practical understanding of this topic. Before we jump straight into what race conditions are, we first need to touch on the computer science concept of concurrency. If we take a look at Wikipedia, we can see a fairly verbose definition. Concurrency is the ability of different parts or units of a program, algorithm or problem to be executed out of order or in partial order without affecting the final outcome. Sure, okay, but let's simplify that a bit with an example. Let's say we wanted to create a calculator application to add three numbers together, 2, 4 and 7. In principle, we can add these three numbers together in any order and the final outcome will always be the same. If we add 2 and then 4 followed by 7, we get the same final outcome as if we add 4 and then 7 followed by 2. When performed synchronously, the order of the operations doesn't matter. That is, the order doesn't affect the final outcome. But what if we find this linear addition of three numbers too slow and we want to spice things up a bit? Rather than adding each number in sequence, we could instead beef up performance and add the numbers at the same time concurrently using threads. For example, we could have our three numbers in a list, store the end result in some shared global variable and throw two threads at the same problem. Execution of our threaded calculator could look something like this. Thread one will first grab two and four from the list, perform the addition of those two numbers, update the shared global variable with the result and then remove 2 and 4 from the list. Thread 2 will then grab 7 from the list, perform the addition of 7 with nothing, update the global shared variable with the result, and remove 7, leaving an empty list behind. The list is empty, so we are done. The calculation is complete. And since we just used two threads, we are of course done in exactly half the time. But there is a big difference now in how exactly we are performing our operations. What if that naughty scheduler interrupted our threads in a different order than we just discussed, and instead, the sequence of the threaded operations changes. In that case, the execution of our threaded calculator could also change. What if thread 1 was interrupted just after 2 was removed from the list, but not 4? Thread 2 would now kick in and take 4 and 7 from the list, and all of a sudden, we have a calculation problem. Or more accurately, we have a race condition problem. Our two example threads are accessing and changing shared data at the same time, which when not managed securely can result in unintended or unexpected outcomes. As we have already seen in previous videos, unexpected outcomes for security are almost always a bad idea. But in this simple case, our unexpected outcome is probably not that interesting. Who cares if the multiplication is a bit off? All we have really done here is created a really bad calculator. Well, what if we extend this example out a bit? What if it wasn't just a calculator? For example, what if we have some web application which allows the user to use a coupon during a payment transaction to apply some discount? The application might first check if the user has already used the coupon, and only if they haven't can the coupon and discount code be applied. Well, what happens if two threads make the same request to apply the coupon at almost the exact same time? Depending on the application and timing of those specific requests, this could result in the coupon and subsequent discount being applied two times or even more. These exploitable race conditions are often classed as time of check, time of use vulnerabilities. That is, they are technically still race conditions, but they also involve some state check followed by the use of the results from that state check at a later time. For a vulnerable application, during the time period between when the state check is performed and the results of that check are used, there is an exploitable get wrecked window of opportunity for an attacker to abuse the race condition and therefore the application. Continuing on with how our coupon example might work, an attacker could concurrently send a number of web requests to the coupon application endpoint in an attempt to strike within this get wrecked time window in order to have the same coupon applied to their order multiple times, thereby abusing the application via the underlying time of check, time of use race condition vulnerability to obtain a larger coupon discount than intended by the application developer. 
Depending on the implementation, these types of vulnerabilities in web applications can be present wherever some state changing action is performed, such as transferring funds between bank accounts, submitting a flag to a CTF server, or updating a game's point tally counter. While these example web scenarios are conceptually straightforward, time of check, time of use vulnerabilities don't just affect web applications or crappy threaded calculators. Let's take a more detailed look at a binary which is vulnerable to this same type of attack. This program takes a file name as an argument, then does a few things. Firstly, it checks the file name isn't dank flag. If it is, the program exits. Next, it checks that the file isn't a symbolic link. If it is, the program exits. While this problem is technically solvable without assistance, a short sleep sheet here helps us extend our get rec time window, which makes solving this example easier to demonstrate. Next, the application will open the file, then read from it, and lastly, close the file descriptor. To set up this program as a challenge, we can compile the binary, then change the owner of the binary to be root and set the set UID bit. We can then also set up our dank flag and change the permissions so it can only be read by root as well. So what does this setup mean exactly? Well, as a regular user, we can't just read the dank flag due to the permissions. However, we can execute a set UID binary, which can in theory read that flag file. There is a catch though. We can't just ask the binary to read the dank flag as that request will fail on the first name condition check. Similarly, we can't directly set up a symbolic link to immediately trick the binary read due to the second file type condition check. So what can we do? How can we trick the binary into still reading the dank flag? Well, we do have our get rec time window here between the time of check, which in this case is checking the file's name and type and the time of use, which in this case is actually reading the underlying file. So what we can do is abuse the race condition to trick the binary into reading the dank flag when it actually thinks it is about to read some other assumedly less dank file. All we need to do is time our attack to modify the file at a specific time in execution, namely within that get rec time window. So for example, and in this case, after the file name and type is checked, we need to replace the file which was just checked and verified with a symbolic link to instead reference and therefore read some other more interesting file. So in this case, the dank flag. By abusing this get wrecked race condition time window, we have just abused the binary to first check and verify one file, but then later during execution, read another. At the 247 CTF, you can practice this theory yourself. The challenge, acid flag bank in the web category, will reward you with a flag if you can solve a web-based race condition challenge. If you have any thoughts on this topic or requests for future videos in this Capture the Flag fundamental series, be sure to let me know in the comments section below.